on this Good Friday day. Uh, a couple of notes about our worship service as we worship tonight. Uh, tonight is a solemn service and it plays with uh, themes of darkness and light. And so as we uh, go through the service, the worship space will get darker. Um, but don't worry, before you have to move anywhere, uh, there will be more light. And so uh, just kind of uh, follow along and, and let the, uh, the experience of the night and of this, um, this service that draws us near the foot of the cross with Jesus um, and just kind of move you and, and live into that. Uh, I want to remind you that tomorrow uh, we'll gather at 10 a.m. to start to prepare the space to celebrate the good news of Easter. Uh, and if that's something you would like to participate in, we would love your help. Uh, and on Easter Sunday, we'll be worshiping at 9 and 11. And you're invited, if you have something blooming in your yard, uh, to bring a live flower. Uh, and we put those all together to make a, a beautiful living cross. And so. You are welcome to um, to pick one of the flowers from your yard. If you want to pick one from your neighbor's yard, ask first. All right. And I want to say a thank you uh, to everyone who is reading and uh, and helping to lead this service. Thank you uh, for your work tonight. Will you please stand as you're able? And let's begin with the call to worship. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And this is the judgment, that light has come into this world and we love darkness rather than light. God, God is the light, and in whom there is no darkness at all. For God sent his Son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Everyone that does evil hates the light, and does not come to the light. But all who do what is true come to the light. Come, let us worship in spirit and truth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Most gracious God, look with mercy upon your family gathered here, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed, given into sinful hands, and suffered death upon the cross. Strengthen our faith and forgive our betrayals as we enter the way of his passion through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. First word comes from Luke in the 23rd chapter. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. They came to the place that is called the Skull. They crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by, watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the King of the Jews. The word of the Lord.
second reading is from the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to John. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciples took her to his own home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. third word is a reading from the Gospel according to Luke, the 23rd chapter. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we have indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. This man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Behold, the cross that held the Savior of the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Behold, the cross that held the Savior of the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Behold, the cross that held the Savior of the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. O my people, O my church, what have I done to you? How have I offended you? Answer me. I led you out of slavery into freedom and delivered you through the waters of rebirth. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Forty years I led you through the desert, feeding you with manna on the way. I saved you from the time of trial and gave you my body, the bread of heaven. But you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I led you on your way in a pillar of cloud and fire, that you led me to the judgment hall of Pilate. I guided you with the light of the Holy Spirit, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I planted you as my fairest vine, but you have brought forth bitter fruit. I made you the branches of the vine and never left your side, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I poured out saving water from the rock, but you gave me vinegar to drink. I poured out my life, I gave you the new covenant in my blood, that you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. A reading from the 27th chapter of the Gospel according to Matthew. From noon on, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the 19th chapter of the Gospel according to John. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, 
he said in order to fulfill the scriptures. I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Behold the cross that held the Savior of the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Behold the cross that held the Savior of the world. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Behold the cross that held the Savior of the world. Holy God, holy and mighty. Holy and immortal, have mercy on us. O oh, my people, O oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I gave you a royal scepter, but you gave me a crown of thorns. I gave you the kingdom and crowned you with eternal life, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I struck down your enemies, but you struck my head with a reed. I gave you my peace, but you draw the sword in my name, and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I opened the waters to lead you to the promised land, but you opened my side with a spear. I washed your feet as a sign of my love but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. Oh, my people, oh, my church, what more could I have done for you? Answer me. I lifted you up to the heights, but you lifted me on a cross. I raised you from death and prepared you for the tree of life, but you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, Holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I grafted you into my people Israel, but you made them scapegoats for your own guilt, 
and you have prepared a cross for your Savior. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. I came to you in the least of your brothers and sisters, but I was hungry and you gave me no food, thirsty and you gave me no drink, a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison and you did not visit me, and you have prepared a cross for your sake. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The sixth word, into your hands I commend my spirit. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemn penalty. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. And the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified by him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified, so that you may, but you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be sorry, none of his bones shall be broken. And again another passage of scripture says, They will look on the one whom they have pierced. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus.
For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that all those who believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. <coughs> 